Grand Prix racing in 1934. Even then, a fascinating and exciting competition of state-of-the-art and high-horsepowered vehicles. At the forefront, the cars from Auto Union. The construction of the Silver Arrow is from Ferdinand Porsche. His concept, 4.4 liters distributed over many small units, results in 16 cylinders in V configuration. Ignition mixture is blown through to the engine by a compressor. Porsche recognized that the problem with the new racing car with a maximum weight of 700 kilograms lay in the transmission of the horsepower to the road. This led him, in his design, back to the center of gravity, and that means placement of the engine and gearbox behind the driver. However, the new concept of the Auto Union racing cars leads to problematic driving behavior. Paul Pitch, Auto Union factory driver from 1935 and 36, recalls. That was uh, exactly the point because until then, one had driven only front engine cars. And that was quite new with the Auto Union cars because suddenly you were sitting practically right at the front. You had maybe a 60 to 80 centimeter long front part. The front wheels were right next to you and behind you, you had a huge 16 cylinder engine and you always had to feel how the car stood. If you were not careful and the rear started to drift, then it was not far away from turning and then it was a bit dangerous. That was a colossal change. The first models already delivered 300 horsepower. The elasticity of the engine was amazing from the start. The maximum speed of 4,500 revolutions per minute was also considerably low at the time for a race engine. On March the 6th, 1934, 364 calendar days after work commenced, test driver Hans Stuck achieved a new lap record at the Avis. In addition to Stuck, in the first Audi Union racing team were August Mommenberger, Prince of Leningen, and the replacement driver Wilhelm Sebastian. At the German Grand Prix at the Nuremberg Ring, Hans Stuck led from the start to finish first. And more wins followed. Stuck becomes German champion and German Alpine champion, the highlight of his career. Yeah, I can still feel the blisters from the steering wheel hitting my hands, but I dream about it at night and then and the bent feet from the hot brake pedal. I will never forget. It was not always easy to keep this backdrift under control. Motorsport had become a magnet for the masses with the silver arrows. Hundreds of thousands flocked to the Newburgh ring when the cars started. The smell of racing fuel on hot tires, sport competitions and the sound of compressor motors brought enthusiasm to the audience. Last fine-tuning to see whether all 16 cylinders work. And even back then, fast pit stops also played a role because the tires were the weak point and they had to be replaced in longer race distances. One lap later, Rosemary rolls or stops. But he doesn't turn off the engine. After 25 seconds, continues. The Mercedes-Benz cars developed the biggest competitors for the Outer Union Silver Arrows. However, foreign competitors lose the threat. The German Mountain Grand Prix at Schauensland in the Black Forest. Mountain races are the domain of Hans Stuck. In 1937, Stuck starts with dual wheels on the rear axle to get more power to the road. The Bavarian shows once again that he is rightly named King of the Mountain. He wins. 
But in 1939, when the war began, the era of the Outer Union Silver Arrows came to an end. The racing driver Hans Joachim Stuck, son of the Outer Union driver Hans Stuck, had the opportunity in the early 90s to drive a few laps on the Avis in a Silver Arrow. The 1990 DTM champion is not only enthusiastic, but also greatly impressed by the cars from that era. And the drivers of those days are for him, the true heroes of racing. The race car from the era with which I was now able to go onto the Avish with, there it became even more clear to me what heroes they were in the past. They had no steering aids, had no servo brakes. The cars had an adventurous road holding and incredible power. Up to third gear, one could partially not give full throttle with the bad tires they had. And no security, no roll bar, no real helmets. There were no doctors, no cooling vests, no mineral drinks, and they still drove the Nuremberg Ring 500 kilometer distances. Unimaginable for me. Today, the last surviving Outer Union Silver Arrows will, if at all, only be brought from the collection for exhibition runs because the value of these cars is in the millions, and that in two digits. <laughs>